What? What is it? It was just a gut, a human body. Oh, that, that is so wrong. I really needed the money. I found something that you have been looking for for your collection for years. My name is Steve Santini. I buy and sell the darkest, most gruesome artifacts on the planet. Welcome to the dark side. can't wait to visit Vince's store. I hear he's got an amazing assortment of antique keys. Steph was telling me you have antique keys. And this is handy for me, because aside from being an odd antique collector, I'm also looking for keys because I perform as an escape artist. Well, I do have a whole bunch, and they're actually right behind you, if you just turn around. Oh. Got a ton over there. You go through guys. all those. Yes. <laughs> These are all vintage, too. I see they're priced individually. You got a cricket here. Yeah. We can't find him. Maybe we can ask him what the discounted price. Well, I'll tell you what. If I went over the top here and I wanted to, say, buy all of them, number one, would just sell them, and number two, could I survive the price? Well, uh, the way I'm looking at it, there's probably somewhere around four or 500 keys in here. Right. You could probably do something like $1,200 for the bunch. I'm thinking maybe 1,000 tops for all the keys. I really couldn't do that. Really? It's absolutely There's a lot of keys enough. there for that price. I'm, I'm afraid I really could. It's a shame. Do you have any old padlocks? I mean, with this many keys, you've got to have old locking devices, collectible padlocks. Uh, yeah, that'd probably be up here in this area. Okay. I'll show you the, the racks I got of hardware. Awesome. I'm sure Thank you'll find you. some you need. Thanks, Vince. OK, you're welcome. It's a treasure hunt. Let's start somewhere. Bolts and screws and stuff like that. And... Oh, no way. What? What is it? Shh. A drawer of junk in this one of these? What is it, though? Shh, shh, shh. I'll tell you later. OK, this thing, this thing's worth between three and $4,000. Really? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know what? If I can get this thing for a song, it's the biggest score of the, of the month. Awesome. I can't believe my luck. In a drawer of rusty stuff, it's a 16th century medieval English torture thumbscrew. I mean, I won the lottery today. Vince, my man. Didn't find any padlocks, but I found this rusty piece of junk back there. Maybe not junk, but... Oh, jeez, no. this is one of my fresh farm finds. Look at this, a handmade chain. It came out of a bar. Finished up, yeah. Ah, cool. That's great. I'll give you a sweet deal. For 50 bucks, you can take it home. 50 bucks, you know, whatever it is, it's... Look at uh, this hand yeah, chain. Yeah, look, look, look at the pitting on it, too. Yeah, I mean, the thing's I, well, just... It's been around. And the thread's busted here. I'll tell you what, I'll give you 25 bucks for it. Uh, sure. Not Let's sure. For it. OK, thanks Done a lot, deal. Vince. You're welcome. Right on. I learn a lot shopping with Steve. He has an amazing eye for things that are valuable and dark. Hey, Rob, how's it going? Good. Mail call. Mail call. All right. Ah, oh, I've been waiting for this. You never know what's going to show up in the mail. It's like Twisted Christmas every day. This is a native axe head, and it's made of flint, and the napping, which means the chipping on it, is totally authentic. And I got it from an online seller mm -hmm. that said it came from a dig that happened in the Gananoque region in the 1800s. Yeah. It's either a tomahawk head, a war axe head, or it's some sort of a scraper. I mean, but sure looks like an axe head to me. So that would put this with the Mohawk people. Yeah. yeah. It is. If I'm not mistaken, these are blood stains. Blood stains? I'm Miti, which means I'm part French and part native. And this object, I take seriously. This is very powerful. What are you feeling there, bud? Encourage, honor, fear. It's quite the piece. Yeah, uh, it is. Your hands are shaking, you OK? Yeah, I'll be fine. OK. This is a cool place. Mm -hmm. Steve's birthday's coming up soon. I really want to get him something awesome that's unique. Mm. He's really hard to buy for. It's kind of neat. 
What's that? Slip. <laughs> oh. Whoa. Crap, man. Spear. 59 bucks. This is cool, huh? That's really awesome. 1900s typewriter. 89 bucks. That seems good. Oh, hey, this matches my outfit. Military hat, 35 bucks. It's US military. Commander Steph. Just need a little skimpy outfit now. Dude, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Charles. Look at this. It's a freaking shrunken head. Is it? No, don't, no. Seriously, they're really fragile. Steven has been looking for one of these forever. Mm -hmm. Like, he honestly talks about it all the time, about how he wants a real yeah. shrunken head. Uh, I don't think it's real stuff. It's a shrunken head in an antique shop for 150 bucks. Wow. Steve has found things in weird antique well, yeah, shops, too, because yeah. the people don't know that it's worth mm -hmm. that much. He's wanted a shrunken head forever, so I could buy it for him for his collection, not actually as the birthday gift. Steve is going to love it. Today I'm going to meet museum curator Kevin Windsor. He has a huge collection of stone artifacts. Hopefully he can help me date this axe head. Bought this from an online seller, and it is a stone axe head. Oh, hey, wicked. Can you tell anything from it about maybe what its purpose was? Not an axe head, though. I don't think it's Not, an axe head. It, it's, no, no. Then why is it? OK, I had the idea it was like this. I mean, it's hafted onto a shaft like this, and now I've got a war axe head or a tomahawk head or whatever it would be. Um, if it's held in your hand, why do we have this end worked as well as this, like flaked? Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, it's it's not like anything I've ever seen before. My, my best guess would be that this would be a skinning stone, something to work uh, animal hide. Right. Um, that you would rub it through this way. Well, this is attributed uh, to the Mohawks, okay. which are what, 1380? Yeah, basically. around there. This is going to predate that. Predate uh, that? Yeah, this is about 8,000 BC. No way. It's possible. Don't points that are paleo buried in the ground for long periods of time, don't they like somewhat lose the facets? To the nap? No, not at all. Um, uh, this one, I mean, this one here is 8,000 years old, and you could you could probably still cut your dinner with it. I paid 800 bucks for this thing, believing it was a warrior's axe head. Now I find out it's some sort of stone tool. What is that, by the way? That stain. It, it, could it be dried blood? It it could be. I mean, it could be dried blood. Could be animal grease. You'd probably have to uh, have to take it to. Um, some sort of medical expert. So it could be tested. Yeah, 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 definitely. What do you think the hook is? This is this is an odd I've thing never, here. I yeah, mean. I've, I've never seen anything like that before on any of the pieces. See, my opinion of the hook is that it was used to gut a human body. So you, you believe this is a war axe? I don't need radioactive whatever the hell it is to tell me exactly what it is. I know what it is. Biker Rob thinks this thing is a war axe. The seller sold it to me as a war axe. Kevin believes it's 8,000 BC and it's a hide scraper. I really don't know what to believe. Hey, Seth. What's in the box? I found something that you have been looking for for your collection for years. Awesome. Ooh, cool. See. Just be careful with it because it's really rare. Really rare. It's. <laughs> Oh. Is that amazing? Can I see it for a sec? It's a shrunken head. Yeah, no, no, no. This is not a real shrunken head. You're kidding me. No, like no, no, no. nostrils, no ear canals. It's a real shaved rock. Yeah, like, yeah, what this thing is made out of is goat skin. The real shrunken heads, they cut them down the back, they fill it up with rocks and sand and herbs, the skin shrinks, but you've still got all the features. Like Rob said, the nostrils, the ears. Oh, crap. Oh, you didn't. What? Did you buy this thinking it's authentic? Yeah, I thought it was real. What did you pay for this? It was only a hundred bucks. Don't worry about it. It's the thought that counts. Tell you what, put it up here. Are you done well? We know where your heart is. Yeah. There. Ta da! Quite the place. I mean, everywhere you look, there's stuff. It's fantastic. Wow. See that German fighter plane, the Flock Wolf. That is huh. fantastic. You collect funerary stuff, right? Yeah. You know what these are? I think, they look like. Yeah, I think they're embalming fluid bottles. What the heck's this like, thing? Oh, cool. Let's see. You know what this looks like? It looks like a medieval mace. Knights used to use these on horseback to oh. bash in heads. Yeah. That's well, awesome. let's find out if the owner knows what it is, and uh, maybe we can haggle. I don't see a price. Yeah, hopefully it's cheap. Mm, my <laughs> luck. 
You know, there's real no die-hard tricks to haggling. I mean, everybody you're gonna meet and do a deal with is different. You live in the moment and hope for the best. I was in the front of your shop here, and Steph found this. What is this thing? Anyway? That's for head knocking. You want yours knocked? No, I, no, not really. Um, if you go to sleep, this is what they wake you up with. What are you asking for this? $325. Oh. I, you know what? I, I don't mean to offend you, but if this thing were medieval, I would think the carvings would have been somewhat worn, and we'd have more of a patina to the wood. I mean, think of it this way. I'm educating kids with this about, you know, medieval times and stuff. So it's it's not for profit. I'm not going to resell it. It's for history lessons. Don't forget, I hear that every day. It's either a, a, it's for some class at school or some theater right. putting on a show or right. something, and they need that just for a stage prop. You know, I, I, this goes on and on and on. What are you offering? I, I was thinking, you know, 50 bucks. How about that? As a replica. Well, I'll tell you, you're never going to get that for 50 bucks. Not from me, anyway. Try again. Oh, I can go to 75. Oh, aren't you the happy one? Well, I don't think you know, went from three and a quarter to seventy-five dollars. I don't think so. I'll give it to you for a hundred and a quarter, and that's it. No <sighs> more complaining. Dig out your damn money and pay me. It's hard to haggle with a man that's holding a mace in his hand. Okay, one twenty-five. Thank you, sir. Okay. I feel like I've just been beaten over with this thing. Because, yeah, that would be more merciful. We have a very unusual artifact here. It's an ancient axe head or stone tool, and we're not quite sure how this thing was used. Okay. But one thing that seems pretty persistent on the working edge, I think, or the leading edge, is a dark discoloration. That's the biggest topic of speculation among my people and other experts. Okay. It's not speculation, it's human blood. Yeah, but I mean... Oh, well, I know it is. We need science to back that up. You just have a feeling, and I mean... Well, I know it is. Positive. What exactly do you end up doing with this here? Okay, so the first one that I'm gonna do is called hemodent. And what hemodent is, it's just a color indicator for blood. So okay. all this is gonna tell me is if that, in fact, is blood. We're looking for a blue-green color. The anticipation's killing me. <laughs> This test is telling me that it's a negative for blood, so the, the okay. blood could just be denatured. Is there any other test you can do that's maybe more sensitive, that's more specific, that, you know, kind of as last resort? Yeah, I actually have one more test. This one's called Blue Star. It is used to detect latent blood, and that's blood that we can't really see, so it is highly sensitive. I do need the lights off for this because so it will here. glow. Unbelievable. Definitely got some blue here. I'm gonna spray the other side. Oh, man, I is knew it ever? Look See, at it. I knew it. I knew it's it. Right in that one spot. It's amazing. We can do the hexagon OBTI to determine if it is human, because that, that's a it. positive result for blood. And you know what I'm wondering about this? I'm seeing in that area where the hook is, mm -hmm. there's a lot of crags, like little areas, fissures, where it could have gotten into instead of the smooth surface of the flint. Right. So we know it's blood, and this is definitely for human blood, right, to indicate for. Even a faint line is a positive result for human blood. Can you close look at that? Oh my Where God! The is, you can There's see. two lines. Yeah, the same control. Human blood. I knew it. I knew it, brother. Wow. This is yeah. fantastic. Human blood? Yeah. That's crazy. This thing, right in this little nook here, yeah. they found human blood. Wow. I mean, it just glowed when they put the chemicals That's to it. That's amazing. I'm confused with this thing. Somebody says it's a war axe, another person says it's a tomahawk. One guy says it's a, you know, a skinning knife or something. Personally, now that I see the blood there, I'm starting to think maybe this thing was for taking scalps. Oh, really? Well, it was a practice that was done sometimes in war as trophies. I mean, with this hook here, you can imagine holding this in the hand, right? And pulling it across the top of the scalp. Ah. Now you take this edge. No, no, it gets worse. Look, you take the edge. You're scraping backwards as you're yanking off the scalp. No. What a mess. I disagree with you. You know, it's a war axe for gutting. Visceration. Oh. Right out of I did some research, right, on the seller's original story. Okay. He said there was a Gananoque dig around 1887. Right. I just keep getting the same thing popping up, and it's a dig that took place on a burial ground. <sighs> Ooh. That's not good. It's Mohawk. 
Is there an it's, issue with burial ground? What happens with that? Well, I mean, on this day, you know, they, they found weapons, they found stone tools, they found, mm. yeah, bones, clay vessels that would be buried with the dead. Well, I know one thing, guys. If this is from burial ground, it's got to go back. I, I've got money invested in this thing, you know, but I need more information. How can we take something back? We don't even know what this is. I've got to... I gotta meet this seller. All right, let me see what I can do. Okay, thanks. Steph finally got a hold of the guy that sold me the axe head. It was tough enough getting him to agree to meet with me, but at least I might get to the bottom of this story. Steve? Yeah, hey. I need to know more about this piece. You said it came from a dig near Gananoque in 1887. That's not enough, man. I need more info on this. It just doesn't feel right. My great-grandmother she knew someone who lived on Tid's Island. And she was a little girl after the dig. It was given to her. Tid's Island? Yes, and it's been in the family ever since. <sighs> Look, man, I've been doing my own research. Tid's Island was a Mohawk burial site. This thing would have come out of a burial mound. Ah, uh, that, that is so wrong. I really needed the money. And to guarantee the sale, I left it out of the information. Left... I'm sorry. The guy came clean, and I know the true story. But you know what? It doesn't really matter. You just don't buy and sell things from burial grounds. It's not done. And now it falls on me to make it right. Picked up an old pair of thumb screws at an antique shop on a hunch. These things could be worth a lot of money. I'm gonna have my friend Rob the blacksmith take a look at them and tell me what he thinks. To me, that looks like a torture finger or thumb screw. You know, this is a casting. This is a casting. A casting? It's not yeah. forged? Was it forged? certainly seems to be a casting to me. When I first examined the thumb screw, it became apparent to me almost immediately that it was a casting. Uh, it was not hand forged out of wrought iron. This piece had been cast out of several components. Even the thread, you can see why it broke is because it's cast, it's very brittle, so it, it wouldn't have had a whole lot of toughness to it. When did people start casting material like uh... It wasn't really until the 1800s and the Industrial Revolution that cast iron really took off. And a piece like this would have been stronger made out of uh, forged wrought iron. Right. Okay, what about the threads? I mean, they seem very fine. It looks to me like a 3 8 course. And when was that thread pitch created? I mean, this I is believe, something... again, that was during the Industrial Revolution where they actually standardized threads. What about the chain, Rob? Could you tell anything from that? This is hand-forged chain. So the chain is forged, the piece is cast. This chain could okay. have been added at any point, so this okay. you can't use it as any indication yeah. of the age here. Have some serious doubts about uh, authenticity on this particular piece. It's still a pretty cool piece for what it is. Mm -hmm. It's a wall hanger to threaten people with. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. good stuff. Good fun. Now I've got a $100 medieval thumbscrew replica. Well, it's not all lost. I can take it to medieval fairs and show it to kids. It's still an educational piece. We called up the chief of the Mohawk tribe and told them what we have. They take this issue very seriously, and we're happy to set up a burial ceremony. The ceremony began with the Mohawk Thanksgiving address, which is the tradition of our people, to give thanks for all the elements of creation, whether they're on the land, in the water, or in the air. We are dependent on those elements for our survival, and those elements are not dependent on us for, our, for their survival. To have Steph and Rob here to share in this experience with me was, was really important. I mean, Rob's always been connected with the native culture, but to introduce Steph to that, something she's never had a part of, it meant a lot to me. Seigo. Seigo. Steve Youngguts. Adarotario Youngguts. E so wet nazario wahi. Sadak gari dega. Meeting the chief for me was a real honor because the mere fact he agreed to be part of this and he accepted the return of this artifact, it was enormous for me. I have something ancient and special to return. Oh, eso yo razre ne azre nyaw goa nuksunagoa. It's my pleasure and it rightfully belongs back where it came from. Coming here to the reserve for me was a spiritual experience, not just because of the ceremony, but because in the air, when I touched the earth, when I looked out at the water, I could see the way things were hundreds of years ago. I mean, it was moving.
hardest person to buy for. Happy birthday. What the heck? This is pretty twisted. Is this a male chastity belt or something? What it's a Victorian arm at the size leather straight jacket. Beauty, isn't it? It's a custom made for you by a leather smith. You got this custom made? Yep. Yeah. I hope it fits. I don't feel like it's my birthday anymore. There you go. <laughs> I'll give it a good yank. Okay. Uh, there's no slack in this thing. For more information, go to oln.ca.